This podcast is brought to you by eRadio. For more podcasts, check out our website on eradiosa.com or download the eRadio SA app from the Google Play Store. Enjoy. <coughs> Travel Tuesday with Travel Bug Rose on eRadio. Yes, it is Travel Tuesday again and uh, time for us to uh, join Rose who is going to take us to uh, a different location this afternoon. Last week uh, we went to the Hesequa for the second time and this week she's taking us to the Eastern Cape. Rose, hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Yeah, it's like almost going from from China to America, hey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a jump. So are you there actually now or is it uh, a recent visit that you had there? No, I'm, I'm here at the moment. Oh, like a- um, I'm, yeah, I'm visiting a lodge here it's called Asahai. And okay. it's on the Route 62. It's been an interesting discussion because we're talking about the Route 62 and not the R62, the Route 62, which is kind of the back road from Cape Town all the way to BE, yeah. if you think about it. <laughs> not many people kind of, you know, if you, if you start looking about these things, you can actually literally start in Cape Town. But I'm always, I think it's more like a Worcester thing, so the wine route in Worcester. Mm. And then you're carrying on the Route 62 and you get through the Winelands Route 62 and then you get into the Karoo 62. And then you get to the Lankloof 62 and then eventually into the Eastern Cape. Yeah. And it's actually quite a cool route because it's so different. It's got all the, you know, the mountain stuff instead of the coastal stuff. Mm. So yeah, I, still wanted, I think I still want to, I think I should do that on a motorbike one day. Oh, nice. All the way. Oh, nice. Do you like do you like uh, uh, being a biker girl? Yeah, I think I think this road could lend to some some cruising. What do yeah. you think? Like a nice little easy cruise on a motorbike. Yes, oh, exactly. Yeah, especially this time of year. <laughs> but how's your experience been so far? And how's Asahai where you're staying? Um, it's actually fantastic. I mean, I've been here for a couple of days. Once again, the small towns, um, <coughs> sorry, have uh, lent to like the most amazing hospitality. You know, people are warm and people are friendly, and you always feel like you part of a family instead of just being cast aside and kind yeah. of a number in a in a hotel kind of thing. So I arrived there, and it's um, actually a very interesting little place because this. Play, specific hotel was actually like the eighth spun. So this was the first building before they even built the town of Corredo. It was built in the eighteen um, hundreds, and it was uh, basically commissioned to build an outspan um, next to the river, and it's a halfway stop. So you stop here next to the the Kromrefeer, and then you carry on to Port Elizabeth sort of thing. So that's how it actually originally started mm. and with that you know people have they've then turned it into and it actually used to, the road used to literally go through you see you know you know when you watch a western movie you can't actually go onto the next road until unless you go through the little town kind of thing yeah so this little eight span was kind of designed that way so you literally have your ox wagon and you like go through the hotel or the eight span and then you go on to the road so you couldn't actually avoid it and that was uh, that was then developed and then later on the little town of korea developed <laughs> and mm. yeah i wonder so where the name came from kind of yeah, I was. Uh, I meant to. I knew you were going to ask that question. I actually meant to <laughs> research it, but I'm I just wondering out loud. Uh, yeah, maybe. It's, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Career dough. I don't know. Yeah, I Is think you? I'll have to research it because I know I'm, I've also it was a question I asked myself. But the little town of Corredo is interesting on its own. So we know that Corredo is very famous for its butchery. So mm. people drive from all over um, the Eastern Cape, Western Cape, to, and past Corredo to buy the burros from the Corredo butchery. So I actually went and bought some, bought some buri, and it's a beautiful. I mean, I think it, I think it must be the biggest 
most beautiful building in Kariado. Um, fully stocked with all kinds of yum yums. So you know, if you're a keen meat person and you like to have good meat, that's probably be a very good stop. And then I've discovered like a few other little places. One of the little places I've discovered is a company called, or a little coffee shop called Twin, Co- Twin Company. And they do cakes and coffees and gifts and stuff. And then there's a place called the Sweaty Dutchman, which I actually found very interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he makes pancakes. And I always thought like, nah, you know, a pancake is a pancake is a pancake. Because, I mean, I've been making pancakes since I was 12. So, yeah. these were fabulous. Yeah. And then there's a little place called Norma Jeans, which I haven't been into uh, because they were closed. So I'm now going, heading back to the lodge. But I want to tell you one thing about this this lodge. Um, besides everything, it's got a wedding venue. Mm. And if you're someone who's actually looking to get married, uh, wow. Because what he's done is actually built this like out kind of doorish chapel in a forest. And reception uh, hall in the forest. So <laughs> you're literally sitting in between all these indigenous trees that is like a, with a little bubbling stream in the forest, which is absolutely beautiful. Oh, that's a I lovely mean, wedding venue. Wowie. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not a big one on weddings. I'm allergic to them, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're so bloody expensive, for God's sakes. <laughs> but this, and also, it's a kind of place where you, you don't just go and get married, you know. It's one of those, uh, like they call it in Afrikaans, the Breilof. <laughs> you arrive there, you can actually go, go there, and it's like for the whole family. They've got... I mean... The thing is, what what amazes me the most, you know how I I choose accommodation a lot of times and I think about stuff. It doesn't have to be fancy. Mm. It doesn't have to be pretty or elaborate. It has to be practical and functional. Yeah. Like, you know, things well thought out. And this is what what I find about this place. I mean, literally, he's the owner. He's he's thought about everything he's like he's built a room especially for the bride with a long mirror where she can pack her shoes with a little table and chairs with a long mirror where she can actually do her hair yeah. you know like a hairdresser makeup with the lighting i mean that's nice and then he's put the, the the room next to that he's put the one for the you know little self-catching cottage for the mother his parent uh, for the for the dad uh, uh, you know for the bride's parents and for the uh, the groom's parents and then he's built a, a, another self coding cottage which is a real bachelor's fit it's got like a little thing where you can bry I mean I just you know it's <laughs> hmm. it's so well thought out so yeah I, f- I just love it nice green spaces beautiful um, nice forest and yeah it's nothing elaborate but it's really makes you feel at home yeah, and so you're having a good time. To, I see. I saw yeah. you here. I saw you here uh, on on social media with your pancake test. <laughs> I saw it just now. <laughs> but the food, the food's good otherwise, right? Yeah, no, sure. Country food. It's like people in the country just know how to cook, eh? Yeah. No, they do. They do. They cook from the heart, you see. <laughs> That's what they do. Yeah, you can taste it. Yeah, always. It's all with the love. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, I have this. I always have a saying, you know, when people bring me a cup of coffee that they've made, and I always said, "Did you, did you make sure there's enough love inside?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can taste if it's just uh, without the love. But anyway, I liked the yeah. uh, page now, the Asahai Bosch uh, Country Lodge page. So I'm going to go and stalk a bit yeah. and see what they've got. It yeah. sounds like a, a beautiful destination. Yeah, it is. And also, they've got us another page called Any Boss. So, Any, Any Boss has got the wedding side, obviously. If, you, oh, if you're okay. a bride and you want to get married and you're looking for something different and you want to escape the city and you actually want to take your family away and just go somewhere, go and celebrate your wedding, you know, when no one else will bug you, <laughs> definitely the place to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, that sounds like a, a lovely experience there in the Eastern Cape Rose. Um, when yeah. are you coming back to the Garden Route? I'm heading back tomorrow, so okay. uh, my first stop is obviously Face Adrenaline, so I'm going to go and watch those boys jump off bridges again. Oh, yes. And then, yeah, and then I'm heading back home. Nice, nice. And then, uh, I've 
getting some family from the Karua. Woi, <laughs> kom je Karua mensen bij die En kan hulle ook veel lekker kost maak. Dan sê, dit is yeah. lekker, dit is lekker man. <laughs> Rose, <laughs> Rose, give us your social media details again. Yeah, um, so my Instagram account is at go travel bag. And if you're at Instagram, please go check out those little places. It's really cute. I'll be sharing some more. Uh, my Facebook page uh, is travel bag Rose or just my personal name, which is Rose Bilbro. And um, yeah, or on Twitter at, at go travel bag. Um, and my website www.gotravelbug.co.za I wonder and where you'll be taking us next week where I'm, on earth I'm, will I'm you be <laughs> are, you, are you just going to be <laughs> home a bit next week <laughs> come back home a bit I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to just I want to have like food in, you know food in my fridge that doesn't die <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh that's good but it's it's nice to be a travel bug eh yeah, I know it is. Oh, it is, face. otherwise oh, it's it. nice. And you get to sleep <laughs> in all these beds and taste all the different food. It must be nice. You know, obviously you work hard as well. People don't always see the hard work behind the scenes. No. But um, yeah, to no. me, it looks very yeah, glamorous. Yeah, you know, everybody always thinks this, you know. They say, you know, work for, never work, work for yourself. From, never work from nine to five ever again. Work for yourself. <laughs> work 24 hours a day. You see, I'm because seeing just... that. I'm seeing that now. You never switch <laughs> off. Yeah, it's so true, hey? Yeah. You think, hey, I'm no, working for know. myself, so I won't, I've got flexible hours. I won't work nine to five. But then eventually <laughs> you end up working 24-7. <laughs> You're so know, right. That's like, so right, eh, Rose? Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. You wake up, you're like, all of a sudden, 10 o'clock at night, you go, oh, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. And then you like jump onto something and you do it and you're like, what the hell? Yeah, no, that's that's <laughs> three o'clock for me in the morning, so. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Sleep schedule's all screwed, I tell you. But anyway, we'll fix it at, at some stage. <laughs> Rose, <Yeah. laughs> thank you so much as always. Uh, and uh, enjoy uh, your last night in uh, Korea, though. I will do. Thank you very much. Talk and to have you next an week. awesome afternoon. I'll see you. you got an interesting guest coming up. Yes, yes, at half past two. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> see if you can listen. I will do. I'll Thanks, do Rose. Best. Take care. This podcast was brought to you by E Radio. For more podcasts, check out our website on eradiosa.com or through the E Radio SA app from the Google Play Store.